Students, please find your seats. Today, Ms. Sullivan has a special treat for you. First, a few school reminders. Absolutely no smoking is allowed on school property. The Conjunction Junction already produces enough smoke. Interplanet Janet will be in orbit tonight, so expect strobes and maybe a few comets. We would hate to have any unnecessary interjections, so please silence your cell phone. If you must leave the classroom, please follow the red exit signs to the right and left front of you and the main doors behind you. As our Schoolhouse Rock principal always says, since you're in place and we're in place, on with the show. Good morning, class. I'm your new teacher, Mrs. Miser. No, that's terrible. I don't know why I'm so nervous this morning. I mean... I mean, I have a degree. I love children. There should be no reason why I won't be a great teacher. They're gonna laugh at me. I hope they don't think I'm goofy. I'll be fine. They're only eight-year-olds. I remember what it was like to be an eight-year-old, I think. Those little monsters are gonna eat me alive. I got up early. I have plenty of time. I'll just look over my lesson plan. Ugh, it's too early. I wish I could just go back to bed. <sighs> I'm not a morning person. Maybe if I just watch a little TV, I'll be able to relax. As your body grows bigger, your mind must flower. It's great to learn, because knowledge is power. It's Schoolhouse Rocky, a chip off the block of your favorite Schoolhouse, Schoolhouse Rock. Hey, I didn't know these Schoolhouse Rock things were back on. I guess I have a little time to watch. Hey, and welcome to Schoolhouse Rock. Live Junior! Where we are the Schoolhouse, and you are rocking it! Who are you? And what are you doing in my rec room? We're you, Tammy. I'm going crazy. That's enough TV for one morning. No, no, no. Don't turn off the TV. Leave the TV on, please. You want the TV? Take the TV. The TV's yours. Just leave me alone. Relax, Tammy. We're the different parts of you. We're all the ideas you have in your head. And it's not just us. You have so many ideas in your head. Just look around. Hey! I don't understand this. Don't you see, Tammy? We're every person you've ever met. We're every place you've ever been. We're everything you've ever known. Feel better. No. You look great. Well, every person you can know and every place that you can go and anything that you can show, you know their nouns. A noun's a special kind of word, it's any name you ever heard, I find it quite interesting, a noun's a person, place, or thing. Oh, I took a train, took a train to another state, the flora and the fauna that I saw were really great, but when I saw some bandits chasing the train, I was wishing I was back home again, took a train, took a train to another state. Well, every person you can know Like a bandit or a jabir And every place that you can go Like a state doodle doo 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 And anything that you can show Like animals doodle doo 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 You know their mouths You know their mouths Oh, I took a ferry to the Statue of Liberty My best friend was waiting there for me We went for a walk on the silent, you know And in the middle of summer it started to snow We took a ferry to the Statue of Liberty Well, every person you can know Doodle doodle ship And every place that you can go Like an island Doodle doodle doo And anything that you can show Like a statue A ferry 
you know they're now. You know they're now. Oh, I put a dime in the drugstore record machine. Put a dime in the record machine. Hold it, go and he started playing, if you know what I mean. If you know what I mean. I heard a chucky chucky, he was doing the twist. And the needles of the monkeys, it goes like this, yeah. I put a dime in the drugstore record machine. Well, every person you can know. The Beatles! Do -do 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 -do. And every place that you can go. Like a neighborhood. Do -do 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 -do. And anything that you can show. Like a dime! Do -do 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 -do. You know they're now. Uh, now's a special kind of word. It's any name you ever heard. I find it quite interesting. A noun is a person, place, or thing. A noun is a person, place, or thing. Okay, guys, I usually enjoy a good morning hallucination, but I have to get back to teach my first day of classes, so I'd appreciate it if you'd all just scoot. Relax, Tammy. We know it's your first day of teaching. That's why we're here. We're here to help you, right? What would really help is if I look over my lesson plan. It's going to be tough enough already. <sighs> Tammy, it's not going to be tough. It's going to be easy. Why, when we get through with you, it'll be as easy as... One, two, three. Three is a magic number. Yes, it is. It's a magic number. Somewhere in the veil of ancient history gives you three as a magic number. The past and the present and the future, faith and hope and charity, the heart and the brain and the body gives you three as a magic number. A man and a woman had a little baby. Yes, they did. They had three in the family. That's a magic number. Three, six, nine, twelve, fifteen, eighteen, twenty-one, twenty-four, twenty-seven. 30. Do that with me. 3, 6, 9, 12, 15, 18, 21, 24, 27, 30. Now multiply backwards from 3 times 10. 3 times 10 is 30. 3 times 9 is 27. 3 times 8 is 24. 3 times 7 is 21. 3 times 6 is 18. 3 times 5 is 15. 3 times 4 is 12, and 3 times 3 is 9, and 3 times 2 is 6, and 3 times 1. What is it? 3? That's a magic number. A man and a woman had a little baby. Yes, they did. They had 3 in the family. That's a magic number. Wow, that was the coolest song. How can you say that was the coolest song when we have so many more cool songs to do? I don't know. It was just the first adjective that came to mind. What's an adjective? I know what an adjective is. It's a word used to describe things. Here, let me tell you a little about that. Got home from camping last spring. Saw people, places, and things. We barely had arrived. Friends asked us to describe the people, places, and every last thing. So we unpacked our adjectives. I unpacked frustrating first. Reached in and found the word worst. Then I picked soggy and next I picked foggy and then I was ready to tell them my tale. Cause I unpacked my adjectives. Adjective. 
Adjectives are words you use to really describe things. Handy words to carry around. Days are sunny or they're rainy. Kids are dumb or else they're brainy. Adjectives can show you which way. Adjectives are often used to help us compare things. To say how thin, how fat, how short, how tall. Girls who tall can get taller. Boys who are small can get smaller. Till one is the tallest, the other is the smallest of all. We hiked along without care. Then we ran into a bear. <laughs> he was a hairy bear. He was a scary bear. We beat a hasty retreat from his lair. Described him with adjectives. Next time you go on a trip, remember this little tip. The minute you get back, they'll ask you this and that. You can describe people, places, and things. Simply unpack your adjectives. You can do it with adjectives. Tell them about it with adjectives. You can shout it with adjectives. Adjectives! Shout it out, crazy backpacking adjectives, girl. Au revoir, my brown-eyed, gregarious, friendly friend. Okay, guys, I think I'm starting to get the idea here. I can teach grammar if I just use a little imagination. Right. But I'm not just going to be teaching grammar. I'm also going to be teaching math and science and social studies. Aha! Uh -huh. Social studies. I believe I know what your problem is, and I think I know what I can do to help you. Follow me. What are we waiting for? George! My name's not George. It's Bill. <laughs> I'm just a Bill. Yes, I'm only a Bill. And I'm sitting here on Capitol Hill. Well, it's a long, long journey to the capital city. It's a long, long wait while I'm sitting in committee. But I know I'll be a law someday. At least I hope and pray that I will. Cause today I am still just a Bill. Gee, Bill, you certainly have a lot of patience and courage. Yeah, and when I started out, I wasn't even a bill. I was just an idea. Some folks back home decided they wanted a law passed, so they called their local congressman, and he said, You're right! There ought to be a law! Then he sat down, wrote me out, and introduced me to Congress, and I became a bill. And I'll remain a bill until they decide to make me a law. I'm just a bill. Yes, I'm only a bill. And I'm sitting here on Capitol Hill. Well, now I'm stuck in committee, and I'll sit here and wait while a few key congressmen discuss and debate whether they should let me be a law. How I hope and pray that they will, cause today I am still just a bill. Listen to all those congressmen arguing. Is all that discussion and debate about you? Yeah, and I'm one of the lucky ones. Most bills never even get this far. I hope they decide to report on me favorably, otherwise I may die. Die? <laughs> yeah, die in committee. What oh, happened? but it looks like I'm gonna live. Now I go to the House of Representatives and they vote on me. But what if they say yes? Then I go to the Senate and the whole thing starts all over again. Oh no. Oh yeah. I'm just a bill. Yes, I'm only a bill. And I got as far as Capitol Hill. Well, now I'm off to the White House where I'll wait in a line with a lot of other bills for the president to sign. And if he signs me, then I'll be a law. How I hope and pray that he will, cause today I am still just a bill. You mean even if the whole Congress says you should be a law, the president can still say no? Yup. That's called a veto. And if the president vetoes me, then I go back to Congress and they vote on me again. But 
by that time... By that time, it's very unlikely you'll become a law. It's not easy, is it? But how I hope and pray that I will, cause today I am still just a bill. He signed a bill, now you're a law. Oh yeah? That was one of my favorite ones. I forgot how much I learned on Saturday mornings between bowls of Cocoa Puffs. That's right, Tammy. And don't forget, it was a schoolhouse rock song that helped you pass Mr. Down's Constitution test. That's right, an entire classroom full of people singing. Hey, do you know about the USA? Do you know about the government? Do you know about the Constitution? In 1787, I'm told our founding fathers did agree to write a list of principles for keeping people free. The USA was just starting out a whole brand new country. And so our people spelled it out, the things that we should be. And they put those principles down on paper and they called it the Constitution. And it's been helping us run our country ever since that day. The first part of the Constitution is called the Preamble and tells us what those founding fathers set out to accomplish. We the people, in order to form a more perfect union, establish justice, ensure domestic tranquility. Provide for the common defense, promote the general welfare, secure the blessings of liberty to ourselves and our posterity. Do ordain and establish this constitution for the United States of America. I'm told our founding fathers all sat down to write a list of principles that's known the world around. The USA was just starting out a whole brand new country. And so our people spelled it out. They wanted a land of liberty. But Dory, how does the preamble go? I'm glad you asked, George. We the people, in order to form a more perfect union, establish justice, ensure domestic tranquility, provide for the common defense, promote the general welfare, and secure the blessings of liberty. To ourselves and our posterity do ordain and establish this constitution for the United States of America. For the United States of America. They forgot to mention one important thing. What's that, What's that Tim Tim? That learning should be fun. It should be like a game. You're right. right. That one really wore me out. I'm ready for a nap. No naps. We have to keep our blood moving. Well, there's a great new craze that's sweeping the nation. Come on, do the circulation. Oh, what a great sensation. Come on, do the circulation. Out through your arteries, into your veins. Your heart pumps the blood, then it does it again. So come, come on, everybody, get on, everybody. Circulation. So come on, everybody, exercise your body. For circulation. Circulation. Everybody form a circle now. Oh, circulation. Like your blood, you just start moving around. Circulation. 
is a function that's so outside. If bees are cold, you're not circulating right. We got four hard parts to pump the blood, blood, blood. Yeah, that's circulation. Left and right ventricle, left and right atrium. Yeah, they do it, they circulate. They pump blood through your lungs for oxygen. And then your arteries take it through to your body. And the veins send the old blood back to be renewed. Circulation takes nutrition to your cells. And gets rid of carbon dioxide and waste as well. Circulation. It's a function that's so out of sight If your hands are cold and you're not circulating right Well your blood is such a life-giving potion Like a river it's always in motion From your head to your toes doing good as it goes It's a big red ocean well, There's great news babe that's sweeping the nation Come on do circulation what a great sensation Can't they do it, they circulate Pump into your veins Your heart pumps the blood and it does it again so come on, everybody get it on Everybody, circulation so come on, everybody get it on Everybody, circulation For circulation Yeah! Criminy, George. That one done wore me out. That was a really fun song. And? And? It was very informative. But? But? It wore me out a bit. Or? And? But? Yeah. Or? Hey! What's up with all those conjunctions? I don't know, Tammy. You tell us. Hooking up words and phrases and clauses. Conjunction, junction, what's that function? I got three favorite cars that get most of my job done. Conjunction, junction, what's that function? I got Ann, but no, they'll take you pretty far. And that's an adjective like this and that. And there's but. That's sort of the opposite. Not this, but that. And there's or, all are. We have a choice like this or that. And but no, gets you pretty far. Conjunction, junction, what's that function? Hooking up two cars to one and making them run right. Milk and honey, bread and butter, peas and rice. Hey, that's nice. And dirty but happy, digging and scratching. Losing your shoe, poor but no two is poor but honest, sad but true. Conjunction, <laughs> what's your function? Hooking up cars and phrases, complex balance line. You now or later, or no choice. Me now nor ever. Hey, that's clever. Eat this or that growth enough, I'd never ever would I do that. I don't want to be fat. Conjunction, junction, what's your function? Hooking up words and phrases and causes and complex. Out of the frying pan and into the fire. He cut loose the sandwich, but the loon wouldn't go any higher. Let's go up to the mountains or down to the seas. You should always say thank you or at least say please. Conjunction, junction, what's your function? I'm hooking up words and phrases and clauses and complex things like in the mornings when I'm usually a lot of work. I love to take a walk through the gardens and down by the lake where I often see a duck and a drake and I wonder as I walk by just what they'd say if they could speak although I know that's an absurd thought Conjunction, junction, what's your function? Hooking up cars and making them function 
Junction, 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 how's that function? I like tying up words and phrases and clauses. Junction, Junction, what's that function? I'ma get you there if you're very careful. Junction, Junction, what's that function? I'ma get you there. I'm ready to teach me some English. Good, Tam Tam. Good. But English is one of the first many languages of your new students. That's right. Many of my students are from different countries and cultures. I'm going to be a very important part in their transition to America. That's right. But that's what makes it so exciting. You have as much to learn from them as they have to learn from you. That's one of the great things about growing up in the United States. My grandmother came from Russia, a satchel on her knee. My grandfather had his father's cap he brought from Italy. They heard about a country where life might let them win. They paid to sail to America and there they melted in. Lovely Lady Liberty with her book of recipes and the finest one she's got. The Great American Melting Pot The Great American Melting Pot was founded by the English, but also by the Spanish, Dutch, and French. The principal stitch sticks, our heritage is mixed, so any kid can be the president. You simply melt right in, it doesn't matter what your skin, it doesn't matter where you're from, or your religion, you jump right in. The Great American Melting Pot, the Great American Melting Pot. America was the new world, and Europe was the old. America was the land of hope, for so the land is told. Our steamboats by the millions, in search of honest pay. Those 19th century immigrants sailed to reach the USA. Lovely Lady Liberty with her book of recipes and the finest one she's got. It's the Great American Melting Pot, the Great American Melting Pot. What good ingredients, Liberty Immigrants. They brought their country's customs, the language and their ways. They built the factories till the soil helped build the USA. Go on and ask your grandma, hear what she has to tell. How great to be American and something else as well. Lovely Lady Liberty, with her book of recipes, and the finest one she's got. The Great American Melting Pot The Great American Melting Pot Dina, it wasn't as easy as you made it seem creating America. Our country didn't always reach from sea to shining sea. 
You're very right. We definitely had our share of growing pains. Ow. Ow. Ding. You will discover when you get next to one another is everybody needs some elbow room. Elbow room. It's nice when you're kind of cozy, but not when you're tangled nosey nosey. Oh, everybody needs a little, needs a little elbow room. That's how it was in the early days of the USA. People kept coming to settle, though the East was the only place there was to go. The president was Thomas Jefferson. He made a deal with Napoleon. How'd you like to sell a mile or two? Or three, or a hundred, or a thousand. And so in 1803, the Louisiana Territory was sold to us without a fuss and gave us lots of elbow room. Oh, elbow room, elbow room. Got to, got to get some elbow room. It's the West or bust. And God we trust, there's a new land out there. Lewis and Clark volunteered to go. Goodbye, good luck, wear your overcoat. They prepared for the good times and for bad. And for bad. They hired Sacagawea to be the guide. She led them all across the countryside, reached the coast, and found the most elbow room they ever had. The way was opened up for folks with bravery. There were plenty of fights to Lynn ran rights, but the West was meant to be. They called the manifest destiny. The trappers, traders, and the peddlers, the politicians and the settlers. They got there by any way they could. Any way they could go! The gold rush trampled down the wilderness. Railroad spread across from east and west. Soon the west was opened up for, opened up for good. And now we jet from east to west. Goodbye, New York. Hello, LA. But it took those early folks to open up the way. Now we got a lot of room to be growing from sea to shining sea. Guess that we have got our elbow room. Elbow room. But if there should ever come a time when we're crowded up together, I'm sure we'll find some elbow room up on the moon. Oh, elbow room, elbow room. Got to, got to get some elbow room. It's a moon or bust. And God, we trust there's a new land up There's a whole universe of possibilities. And my students are gonna be the ones to take us there. Wow, I love that song. It reminds me when I was a kid. I used to love riding on trains. Have you ever ridden on a plane? Yes. How about a boat? Yep. How about a spaceship? I don't know anyone who's ever traveled in space. I know someone who has. They say our solar system is centered around the sun And planets large and small parading by But somewhere out in space There's another shining face That you might see some night up in the sun Waving high. Interplanet Janet, she's a galaxy girl. A solar system missed from a future world. She travels like a rocket with her common team. And there's never been a planet Janet hasn't seen. No, there's never been a planet Janet hasn't seen. She's been to the sun. It's a lot of fun. Hi. It's a hot spot. It's a gas. Hydrogen and heat. In a big, bright, glowy mass. It's a star. Ooh, it's a star. Ooh, a planet got an autograph. Uh -huh. Mercury was near the sun, so Janet stopped by. But the mercury on Mercury was much too high, so Janet split for Venus. But on Venus, she found 
She couldn't see a thing for all the clouds around Earth looked exciting, sort of green and inviting So Janet thought she'd give it a go But the creatures on that planet seemed so very weird to Janet She didn't even dare to say hello It's a play, it's a play Why it must be a UFO What it was, it's a planet Janet She's a galaxy girl A solar system missed from a future world Jupiter's big, and Saturn shows off its rings. Uranus is built on a funny tilt, and Neptune is its twin. And Pluto, little Pluto, is the farthest planet from the sun. They say our solar system isn't alone in space. The universe has endless mystery. Well, Tammy, we've been here long enough. We know you have a long day planned ahead of you, and I think it's time we have to go. What? You can't go yet? There's still so many cool songs we have to do. Like, lolly, 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 get your adverbs here. But no, really, Tammy, that is the end. We've got to get back to where we came from, just like Janet here. Right, Janet? Right, Shuey. Goodbye, Tam Tam. Good luck, Tam. And remember, you learn something new every day. Look out for it. Bye, Tam Tam. Bye, bye, Tam Tam. Wait, 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 wait. I still have a little time left before I have to be to class. Do you think we can just do one more song? Well, what is which it? Which one? Hey, my personal favorite. Introduction. Reginald was home with the flu, uh-huh. The doctor knew just what to do. They cured the infection with one small injection. And Reginald uttered some interjections. Hey, that's smart. Ouch, that hurts. Yeah, that's not fair. Can the guy sat down there? Interjection. Hey, Joe Simon. Ow, our emotion. Yeah. Generally set apart from a sentence by an exclamation point or by a comma when the feeling's not as strong. When Geraldine played hard to get, uh huh, Geraldo knew he blew her. Yet he showed his affection despite her objection. And Geraldine hollered some interjection. Well, you've got some nerve! Oh, I've never been so insulted in all my life! Hey, you're kind of cute! Interjections! Well, no assignment oh, or emotion okay. They're generally set apart from a sentence by an exclamation point Or by a comma when the feeling's not as strong So when you're happy Hooray! Or sad Aww. Or frightened <laughs> Or mad Rats. Or excited wow. Or glad Hey! An interjection starts the sentence right Game was tied at seven and all, uh-huh. When Tammy found she had the ball, she made the connection in the other direction. The crowd started shouting out, Interjections! Oh, you threw it the wrong way! Darn, you lost us the game! Hooray, I'm for the other team! Interjections! Oh, Simon! 
or a motion They're generally set apart from a sentence by an exclamation point Or by a comma when the feeling's not as strong So when you're happy <laughs> Or sad Aww. Or frightened <laughs> Or mad Rats. Or excited Aww. Or glad Aww. An interjection starts the sentence right Interjections or motion. They're generally set apart from a sentence by an exclamation point or by a comma when the feeling's not as strong. Interjections, show excitement or emotion. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Darn, that's the end. At this moment, I would like to take time to recognize the senior drama members and some of their accomplishments on this stage. Miss Christina Aldrich has been in six drama productions, three one-nighters, three years of singing six her high school career. Brandon Schultz has been in six high school drama productions, two one-nighters, two years of Just Guys, and one Carmi League of Arts production, and is the treasurer of the Drama Thespian Clubs. Nelanie Sullivan has been in six high school productions, two one-nighters, two years of Singing Six, and is the president of the Drama Thespian Club. Shea Smith has been in seven high school productions, three one-nighters, and is the secretary of the Drama Thespian Clubs. And the Walker Sinclair has been in six high school productions, three one-nighters, four years of Just Guys, 13 League of Arts productions, and is vice president of the Drama Thespian Clubs. And I am so happy that I got to do one more production with you guys. I wish you the best. <laughs>